Hello, good evening, and uh, welcome to the Red Bull Ring. Uh, we are here for our nightly entertainment of sprinting, and here we go. The first car is coming out on track right now. Um, this is Josh Baker. Uh, he's been a regular competitor at all of our sprints so far, and he's driving a Nissan GTR today. Uh, he's on his outlap. Um, if you are in batch A, as you can see in the top right, can you head into the party now please and uh, get into the uh, lobby? We're going to be running everyone in order and uh, each driver will be getting three timed runs, the fastest of which will be the one that counts towards the event. So here we go, first driver onto his flying lap, Josh Baker running a bit wide. So Josh normally able to turn it on. And a few of the drivers have just discovered it's the short track. This could be quite entertaining. So using all the curb there, Josh. So he's going to be the first to lay down a marker this evening. I seem to have lost the audio. There we go. We've got some audio back. Fantastic. So that's a 47.951, we've got that on the wrong driver there. Right, next up we have uh, Darren Worth, uh, ah, and he's off, there we go, uh, we've got a few issues with the uh, online timing here which I'm just going to have to sort out. Right, there we go. So, uh, Darren, uh, it was 64.6 there. Uh, uh, puts him in second place for now out of the two runners we've had so far. Let's see if I can find the right competitor. There we go. So, Mike Lear. Uh, this is Mike's first run, like everyone else at the moment. Uh, Mike is tonight driving a Honda NSX Group 3 car like everyone else and he's four tenths up at the moment so uh, Mike normally competes in the Vincenzo and Sons Bristol MX-5 Challenge in a immaculately prepared uh, green Mark II MX-5 shared uh, with his brother Nick
again struggling to find the track driver. Here we go. Uh, so, this is a uh, rather nice Porsche here. This is uh, Thomas Harrison. Um, interesting fact, once owned a Fiat Panda 100 horsepower and it was glorious. That's a good write down for the commentary sheet there. <laughs> it doesn't tell us much. But uh, Thomas doing uh, reasonably well here. So I think that was uh, second place there. 48976, uh, which puts in between Josh and Mike. So let's uh, look for the next driver. So this is uh, Matt Van, a regular sprinter at our events in uh, an Audi TT. Uh, uh, last year's Dick Mayo sprint, he was the fastest person not in an elite based car in his class. So, uh, good job there. He's today driving a Mercedes. I'm sure it's probably got rather a lovely grumble in the soundtrack, but I can't quite hear that. So that's a 50.279, puts him into fourth place there. Now we've got uh, Phil Quinn. With a, a lovely Bristol Motor Club sticker all over the car. No extra points for that, but it does look nice. And he's fastest up by two tenths. So, uh, small mistake here, we <laughs> good evening, we appear to have uh, forgotten to press the go live button. Uh, we are now on to our seventh, uh, sixth car in fact, on the second time run. Um, sorry we've missed uh, the previous, but we'll uh, post it as live on YouTube later on, or you are on YouTube. <laughs> then it's all good. Anyway, uh, this is Josh Baker. He is uh, currently leading um, on a 47.951 and this is his second time run. So uh, Josh comes out the uh, final corner there, he was a couple of tenths down in the first sector and uh, not quite enough to uh, improve on that run. So now we have the fun job of uh, finding everyone on track. And here is Darren Worth. Uh, he set a first time already this evening. Uh, this is his second time to run. Um, Darren is a, a circuit marshal in the real world and he's a probationary clerk of the course uh, for karting and so very experienced at the racetracks. Um, 
and uh, doing reasonably well this evening. He had uh, an off at the first corner on his first timed run, so this is a massive improvement. That's a 50.875, I'm sure he'll be uh, <coughs> quite happy with that. So here's Tom Weaver. Tom has uh, been a bit of a stalwart of our events. Um, he's uh, 17 years old and uh, this was supposed to be his second year in speed events, um, but obviously he's uh, doing that online and not in the flesh. He normally drives a Van Diemen Formula Ford in a very similar colour. Today he's driving a Ferrari 458 by the looks of things. So what can Tom put down? It's a 48.6, which is going to put him into third place. It's a good banker there. He'll be looking to improve later on. And here we go with Phil Quinn, who currently sits in second place after his first timed run. He'll be uh, looking to improve on that on his second run here. Lovely paint job on that 911. Very big motor club graphics. Kudos points. Bit of consternation about track limits on the uh, driver chat, but he's uh, a tenth up. Again, uh, good use of the track limits there. Let's see where he ends up at the end of this one. 48.3, which puts him into, uh, keeps him in uh, second place in fact, it's no improvement. So, Thomas Harrison. Um, once owned a 100 horsepower Fiat Panda, a glorious one at that. Uh, he's uh, currently on a 48.976 in fourth place. So, uh, pedalling the Porsche quite well. If you can find a few tenths, that's going to push him into third place. Forty-nine-two. No improvement this time. And here we go, Mike Lear. This is his second time run. He's been quite strong in these events and very strong, dominant in fact, in the weekly time trials that we've been running. He's uh, currently fifth on a 49.5. He's just asking how many goes he gets. The answer is one more after this, which tells you all you need to know about this run not happy with that exit of turn one. <coughs> Definitely using all the track there. A few coughs on the uh, driver's audio chat there. Didn't help that, it's a 52.29. Matt Van back on track for his second timed run. Matt's 
currently on a 50.2 and sat in sixth place. It's going to need the uh, best part of a second to drop into fifth, but that seems eminently possible. Showing the green light there. He's missed the apex there and he doesn't sound too pleased. Let's see how that mistake has affected his time. 48903, which puts him into fourth place. He's be happy with that. So, Tom Weaver, currently sitting in third place. And this is his second time run. It's the last in this uh, initial group of seven to uh, complete his second time run. He's up. So if he can find a few tenths, that will put him into second place. He's only about seven tenths off the lead. Oh, but well, that's not going to help. Oh, big tank slapper. But well, that's thrown away uh, any chance of a reasonable run there. What a shame. 49.4 despite that effort. So next up we have uh, Pete O'Connor. He's driving a Mercedes. I'm sure it's got a wonderful soundtrack as well. But I'm not biased. Very neat and tidy. Pete uh, was the Bristol Clio Cup champion. He's got a lot of karting experience behind him. Um, and he describes himself as terrible with a controller on the PlayStation. Um, he's got a lovely Westfield in the garage, which he's planning to compete just as soon as this current situation is over. So he's making the most of it on the PlayStation tonight. Very neat final corner there. See how that puts him out. 48.984. That's a very close battle uh, in the high 48. Three on a 48.9. Pete, Pete falls into sixth place. So next up, Gary on his first of his three timed runs this evening. Uh, Gary's been competing at all of our events. And uh, he's been doing reasonably well. Uh, curbing on the exit of both of the uh, final corners. It's uh, 49.225, which puts him into seventh position. Good job, good solid first time run. So uh, next is uh, Tom Weaver. He's uh, on his out lap at the moment. Um, he did a 48.6 on his first run, but his second run was um, looking great until he uh, had a bit of a wobble. But he was still only 8 tenths slower, despite what was a reasonably large moment. So there's a possibility of a significant improvement here. Let's see how he gets on. He's 
generally been pretty neat and tidy and that's a uh, green light there best uh, sector it's a promising start there we go out the final corner looking neat all the way through 48.690, four thousandths of a second quicker than his first run. I'm sure he wanted to go a little bit quicker than that, but it's still a solid third place. So, current leader, Josh Baker, final run. Can he improve? He was unable to improve on his second run. The uh, current leading time was set on his first time to run. Oh, and over the grass. Just lost the back end there on the way in. I suspect that means he's not going to improve. Let's see what happens when we get to the end of this lap. So at the final corner, reasonable amount of curb, but looking nice and neat. 48.591 that would have been good enough for third place but he's already leading good drive let's see if he can hold on to that for the rest of the evening Darren Worth. This is his third time run. He had uh, an off in the first one. His second one a banker. Let's see what he can put in for the final run. Currently sits ninth and he's improving. Small interruption from a house phone there on the driver's jack. Uh, slightly distracting. Uh, but I think that was a 510, which uh, isn't an improvement. Here we've got uh, Phil Quinn on his final run. Phil did a 48.2 on his first run, which is the time that put him in second place, and a 48.3 on his second time run. Using all of the track and most of the runoff area. <laughs> Can he improve? No, it's 49-0. So, stays in second place. So here's uh, Thomas Harrison for his final timed run. He uh, managed a 48.9 on his first time run and a 49.2 on his second. Yet enough, another of the uh, drivers that has gone slower on his second time run, but it's looking good for the third. He can find seven hundredths and he'll find himself a position higher. And only a few tenths required for a podium position. Forty-nine zero. 
missed the last apex there and that's his uh, excuse. Very nice handbrake turn. So, uh, batch B, when you're ready, there is room for you now on the party, if you can join the party chat and uh, go to the lobby, that'd be great. So here's uh, Matt Van on his final timed run, currently sitting on a 48.9 and improves to a 48.8. Uh, but not quite enough to take that last podium spot. Good job, Matt. Right, here is uh, Mike Lear. This is his final time to run as well. Uh, he did 49.5 on his first run and that currently puts him in 8th position. Uh, his second time run he had a bit of a wobble right at the very start and was unable to improve. Can he improve this time? Missed the apex there and used the fair amount of the runoff area. Let's see what he comes with. 49.8 I believe that was at the end, which is not an improvement. excuses that he hasn't really tried this track uh, but here we've got Gary who is on his second time run he did a 49.2 on his first time run so he can find quite a few spaces with just a few tents and there are a few tents in the first split Lovely uh, pinky purple paint job on his Nissan GTR. Neat and tidy line through there. Very good, Gary. Let's see where he goes. 49.2. Ever so slightly slower, he'll be hoping to go quicker on his next timed run. Here's Pete O'Connor, back for his second timed run. Using all the road there and a fair amount of the kerb. So Pete's on a 48.9 at the moment and that looks like he's going to improve so he's three tenths off the podium at the moment and seven tenths off second place he's got full second to find if he wants to win tonight he does have two runs to do it Forty-eight two five zero, third place and a smidge off of second. He'll be happy with that. Small gap there, 
Um, this is uh, Gary on his outlap. Let's uh, uh, flick over to the results so far whilst he completes his outlap. So Josh Baker in first place on a 47.9. Uh, Phil Quinn on a 48.2, Pete O'Connor just behind on a 48.2, Tom Weaver on a 48.6, Matt Van on a 48.8, Thomas Harrison Lloyd, uh, Lord and Gary both on a 49, uh, oh no sorry, Thomas Harrison Lord on a 48.9, Gary on a 49.2. And talking of which, here is Gary, so three tenths to find. to get into 6th position. Going very deep there on the 2nd corner, but it's a good line by the looks of things, half a second up. Sounds like we've got Sandy Smith uh, as a late entry as well. So that'd be nice to see. So Gary looks like he's improved there. A 48.492 puts him into fourth place. Fantastic. Connor here. He put himself into third place on the last run. He says he's terrible with a controller on the PlayStation, um, so he must be using a wheel tonight. Interestingly, neat and tidy on a PlayStation, just like he is in real life. So final corner. Forty-eight five, no improvement, but he remains in third position. And here we've got uh, Charlie Van. Charlie. Uh, describes himself as not as fast as my dad. Well, that's something that's only going to change with time. I'm sure Matt will make the most of it whilst it's true. Let's find out if today is the transitioning point. So Charlie's driving a BMW. Looks like a strong start. This is uh, Charlie's first time run.
Right, so a uh, small um, issue switching over to the second batch here. Uh, so this is James Herford, just coming to the end of his uh, first timed run there. James is the uh, 2017 uh, Class A champion for the Bristol Vincenzo & Sons Bristol MX-5 Championship. He's planning to have an upgraded car this season, but um, obviously he's online instead. So here's Charlie Van. Uh, famously describes himself as not as fast as my dad and is currently three tenths ahead of his dad. So can he go faster still? That's the question. 48.221. Yes he can. That's second place. Fantastic. Right, here's uh, Sandy Smith. Sandy is um, always found in an Italian car and today is no exception. He's uh, on his outlap here in an Alfa Romeo with his name on the front and the Motor Club sticker on the side. Well done Sandy. Looking sharp. So Sandy describes himself as an MX-5 driver in real life. And he pedals his uh, silver MX-5, his Mark III, exuberantly. Uh, he also describes himself as known for his stunning good looks and his impressive ability to degrade his own car's power to weight ratio. Which I think is a bit of a dig at his, uh, his weight. Um, he's lost a lot of weight over the winter though. Of course, nobody really knows why he doesn't crash. <laughs> but he's always brilliant to watch. And usually very fast. So this will be his benchmark time, his first timed run. See what he can put down as a baseline. So 50.819. So here's Charlie Van. He's uh, currently in second place after that storming 48.221 and he's fastest overall in the first sector. So here's Andy Thompson. 
He's aiming to be faster than Sandy. Both driving Italian cars with Motor Club stickers on the side. This one being a Ferrari 458 instead of Sandy's Alpha. Sandy looking for a benchmark time here. Just to uh, get on the leaderboard and see what's what. Forty nine six nine seven. Um, so that puts him into tenth place. Right, uh, Dale's not on the chat, but if you can uh, leave the pit lane now, that'd be brilliant, please. Uh, this is James Herford. Well known for driving a car that was dubbed Sterling Moss, uh, because it had moss growing on the indicator. He's the uh, current record holder at Castle Coombe for the Great Western Sprint. And this is his second time run. His first was good enough for a 49.7. He's uh, missed the apex there on the penultimate corner. James was uh, remarkably consistent there with a 49.7, uh, slightly slower than his uh, first go. Uh, so next up we have uh, Dale Goodwin. So here we go then, uh, Dale onto his first time lap. Uh, he's a bit of a rally fanatic and he spends a lot of his time doing uh, dirt instead of uh, GT Sport. Um, in real life he competes in auto solos. Um, he had his uh, first season last season. He's hoping to do a few more this season, but he's uh, very much enjoying playing online instead. Let's see what kind of baseline time he can throw down after the first lap. 48780. It's uh, a strong first, first run. Puts him in seventh position. So Sandy Smith out for his second time to run. He did a fifty point eight on the first time to run. describes his uh, technique as uh, mashing the controller. But it seems to be working, he's four tenths up. So Sandy is currently in 13th position. Uh, he needs around a second to uh, jump up into 12th ahead of uh, James Herford. A 
50.0, not quite enough there. So next up is uh, Graham Smith. I uh, used to uh, sprint a uh, Dolomite Sprint uh, in the early 2000s. Uh, he's uh, currently driving the GAN 275 Trophy. Uh, but he's not been brave enough to compete in it yet. No worries with uh, with that tonight. He's currently driving an Audi R8 by the looks of things. And of course, if he does crash it, at least he doesn't have to pay for it tonight. So uh, Graham coming through the last corner here. Here's our final driver this evening to set first time. She's a 50.274 and puts in uh, just behind Sandy Smith in uh, 14th position. So uh, run number two for Dale Goodwin, currently sat in seventh position on a 48.7, uh, less than a tenth away from sixth place and only uh, a few tenths shy of fifth. He's going to need to find half a second to be on the podium, it's a very tight competition for the podium. And here we go, lines are very good there. Absolutely monstered the apex. Fantastic, just the right amount of curve there. Let's see what that puts him in. 48.498, um, which is frustratingly close to fifth mm. position. So on to Andy Thompson in his uh, Ferrari, nice shade of red which matches his uh, MX-5. He describes himself as allergic to diesel, it's an interesting racing uh, description. This is uh, second time run, his first was a 49.6. And he's half a second up by the looks of things. Oh, big oversteer there coming into the penultimate corner. But neat and tidy through the final one. Is this going to 49 1? Two, which is uh, an improvement there and brings him up into the top 10. We'll be happy with that. Knowing Andy, he's happy anyway, <laughs> irrespective. Here's Sandy then, final timed run. Can he break the 50 second barrier? He was 9,000 off it on his second time run. Using just the right amount of curve there. Early turn in, wider on the exit. He's three tenths up by the looks of things. So coming down short straight into the final section. He's obviously spent a lot of time on his uh, livery there. Using lots of curve on both those two corners. Can he break into the 49s? Yes. 
Where was that? That was a 49266, uh, which is almost enough to get him into the top 10, but not quite. So back to uh, Graham Smith here. Currently sitting in 14th on a 50.2. This is his second timed run. Needs to find half a second to uh, leapfrog James Herford. And there it is. Can he continue that to the end of the run? James, of course, does still have another timed run. Nice and neat, getting both apexes on the last two corners. Oh, no, no, there we go. 49293, uh, which does get him in ahead of uh, James and Mike Lear uh, into 12th position there. Go then, back to James. This is his final timed run. He's been very consistent with 249.7 so far. Just a couple of hundred separating his two times, but now he's three tenths quicker. Three tenths will be uh, enough to uh, jump ahead of his uh, good friend Mike Lear. Can he continue that to the end of the run? Interesting uh, <laughs> choice of apex on the penultimate corner. But neatly through the final corner. And a 48.883, a fantastic improvement. He's pleased with that. Ninth position, very good. So, moving on now. a late entry for Clive S. Uh, Clive has been very fast in uh, a lot of our other events. He's driving a rather lovely Jaguar. And this will be his first timed run. 49.6. Which is a very good uh, starter. Puts him in 15th position just behind Mike Lear. Thompson, his final run. It's on a 49.112. He uh, was in the top 10 when he set that on his last run, but he's now in 11th position. Uh, looks like he's not improving on the first sector. sideways into the penultimate corner there. And 49.4, so not an improvement there. 11th position then as it stands. And on to uh, Dale Goodwin. He's uh, Currently on a 48.4. Looks unlikely he'll improve on that given the uh, first corner there. He's currently in sixth position. Let's see how his first sector split looks. 
He's a quarter of a second down there. Forty-eight six three one. Uh, what could have been, I suppose, if it wasn't for that first corner. Well done, Dale. That's uh, sixth yeah. position. Uh, so final run for Graham Smith. Currently on a forty-nine point two. If you can find half a tenth, ah, probably not out there to find half a tenth. But if he can find half a ten, then uh, he'll be beating Sandy Smith. And if he can find a tenth, he'll be ahead of Andy Thompson. Hey. Using all the curb on the inside there. And even more of it on the final corner. And a 49 there. Uh, not enough to improve that. Uh, so he stays in 13th position. So here's uh, Clive S. He's uh, our final driver, but this is his penultimate run. Very neat and tidy through there, half a second up. He's shown some good turn of speed in our other events. And that's carrying on through here. He's a tenth behind Mike Lear. And two tenths behind, sorry, three tenths behind uh, Graham Smith. This is going to be an improvement. 49-1. Uh, that puts him into 12th. So uh, he is the final car to go, so he's going to carry on round. And uh, this is going to be an outlap for his final timed run which will commence at the end of this lap. Let's uh, just have a quick look at the time so far whilst he completes his out lap. So he's there in 12th position at the moment. So here he is on to his final timed run. Very neat through the first corner. Middle of the road on the uh, way into the corner there and a nice tight exit out of the uh, second corner and he's up. So down this uh, short back straight into the final sequence of corners. Not using all the road on the penultimate corner, but nicely apexing there on the final one. Would this be an improvement? 48.517 into seventh position. Fantastic. Well done, Clive. So, that's our final runner and uh, 16 drivers this evening. And um, Here's the uh, final positions.
So, uh, a good evening of racing there. Um, we'll be back again next Saturday. Um, and we will be at a track I really can't remember. But anyway, we'll be back next weekend on the Saturday. You'll need to pre-register. Keep an eye out on social media for the link to register for next weekend's event. We'll uh, see you then.